seems a bit silly holding our microphone. We're having a meet with your father. You all right, Father Leon? <laughs> Welcome. Um, good evening, everybody. Uh, here we are for the constituency committee meeting. Um, I'm going to go through the agenda uh, until we get to our debate. Um, the first thing is members' code of members' code of conduct. Does anybody to uh, Della? Has anybody got any matters of interest? Anybody want to declare an interest? No? No? Brilliant, thank you. Uh, apologies um, from, from Labour. I know we've got apologies from Anita, um, from Sharon Jones, um, Tony Jones, obviously from Ron. And Chris Briggs. Chris Briggs. I think that is. Is that it? Is that from everybody? Yeah. And from. Sorry, Chair. I said obviously from Ron, isn't it? And Ron's wife, very cool. So we, so yeah, we, 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 we don't expect him to be able to give a point all the time because so so that's so that's, so that's a bit <coughs> Is that everything okay? So, yeah, right. Minutes from the last meeting. Has everybody read the minutes? Um, do we approve them as being an accurate um, account of if we can remember that far back? Is it an accurate account from as far back as we can remember? Yes. Okay, that's all agreed. Thank you very much. Um, have we got any public questions? We've got none online. Um, does Father Leon do his now? Father Leon, you, the floor is yours. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chairman. Uh, recently, we had a meeting at Quality Central Library about libraries because uh, libraries are perhaps under threat from the 1st of April next year. And uh, I'm concerned particularly that uh, Seacombe Library can continue, because if it had the one-stop shop jobbies in the town hall, um, there would have been a greater chance, as there is, for example, here in Morton, which is both police station and uh, one-stop shop. But uh, the, the issue of, of uh, also of Wallasey Village Library because it is a centre for the Wallasey Ward and uh, may I suggest that if there are problems there with village churches there might be something to enable it to carry on because it's got a very active committee uh, as it is. Now uh, one issue about Wallasey Central Library uh, a petition was put in in the lecture hall, but it doesn't go to the ceiling. This means that there can't be two vocal meetings at the same time. If there's art or something like that, uh, that, that can happen, art and needlework or something like that. But uh, because I, I, I've actually drawn up a scheme for putting in a filler for the top of the glass petition, uh, which would then make the two soundproof. And I think that should be taken into consideration. And also the uh, principal librarian there, uh, Mrs. Um, Wilson, is in agreement. And the caretaker thinks it would work. So the reason why it wasn't finished up at the top is because it, it's, it's got a curved ceiling. Uh, just one other thing, the street in which I live, I did mention to, the, to, to both Karen and, uh, what was that, I think of Dulcie Gray, but it's Michelle Gray. Um, that the, um, uh, there's a paving stone outside my house where a tree has been removed and it's, it's uh, seesawing and it would be dangerous if there should be a fall of snow. And the, the other thing is that uh, uh, Leander Road, about which I've spoken before, has been repaired and very well done. So has Newland Drive, so has Winchester Drive. And uh, I congratulate the council on doing those as they've done this card way, not just the gateways, but the, the, uh, the Wallace's Champs Elysees itself. Uh, and uh, if perhaps Newland Drive could be made a one way street from Belvedere Road into Wallace, because there is now a children's uh, preschool uh, and the traffic tends to swing round off Wallace Road into Newland Drive. And it is dangerous because of, of little ones. Uh, they put a 20, a 20 uh, speed restriction just today, actually, both ends. But, it, but the posts are there, so they could take 
uh, the symbol for a one-way street. Uh, thank you, Madam Chair. Father, um, with the libraries, I know the libraries are still under review, with everything still going on, so I, I, I really can't answer what's happening with the libraries, but I'm sure whatever is decided with the libraries, when, whenever the time comes. Yes, the cabinet uh, uh, council at the back was going to come, but he had to go to Arapar Hospital, so Councillor Sunderland, is that right? From, right from, uh, Philip Wrightmore. Philip Yes, but he is the one who went to the hospital, the council, the council of the came from uh, MSP. Um, so, as soon as we've got some answers for that, and we've made notes of all your other questions, and we'll get back to you in due, due term with that. There's nothing else. Has anybody got anything to add about the Seacombe Libraries? No? We just waiting? No? No? Okay. Thank you, Father. Right. On to the um, Problem Solving Fund. I'm going to pass over to Caroline for that. We're looking at page 9 to 12 of your agendas. This report relates to the Committee's Problem Solving Fund and it's an update on the latest spend that's been agreed by the Chair since the last committee and that leaves a balance of just over £7,368. I thought it might be useful uh, to give a summary of the fund for members because there are limited bids coming in and it's a fairly substantial amount of money that is available for members' use. So it's really urgent or pressing matters, so that might be something that really needs addressing but there isn't any core budgets available for it. Or it might be something innovative or something that needs piloting that might be of use across the whole constituency if, it, if it's successful. It's for any low spend items, so £500 or less, and it just needs to be approved by the Chair. So I've collated a list of some of the items that have been previously funded through the problem solving fund, if I could just pass that round please, um, which might be of use to members just to note some of the items that have been funded previously from drop curbs to litter bins uh, to improving the exterior lighting on a building, some road safety measures, safety railings, those types of things. Um, so if anybody has any items that they think can be funded out of the, the problem solving fund, um, you're welcome to have a conversation with me in advance and I can make sure for you that it meets the criteria and then it's an email to the chair with a formal request. So I hope that's helpful. Thank you. Has anybody got any questions? asking for 12 months or more now about drop care facilities in Lord Mary. Um, there was funding available to talk in the UW. Um, I spoke to Mark Smith regarding this issue. Mark said, I said if I can find alternative funding, um, could it be that I go ahead with the drop care? And he said, yes, by all means, and they will support me in that. But I don't know what it would cost. It's just two curves basically in the central mall. Um, could I get an estimate on that with the possibility of using some of this Yeah. Yeah, as far as I understand, yes, yeah, as long as you have the costings and they're under five hundred pounds. Yeah, we, 
We have had them. No, that's it. Can't buy them. She can let us know. Um, we have had them funded that, that have come in less than that in the past. If you could both um, let me know the addresses or the locations, yep. and I'll get the cost answers for you. Yeah, I'll look in as well. Thank you. Yep. Is everybody okay? Ready to go. My agenda again. Okay, the uh, community cleanups. I'm going to pass you back to Caroline for the community cleanups. Okay, the funding for community cleanups originates back to 2015. So the report sets out, sets out in section three the various discussions that this committee has had about how they could spend this funding. And consistently throughout that time, the committee's had a considerable balance available to it to spend. So we've worked with colleagues in Wirral South constituency to come up with a proposal that will increase capacity across both constituencies that will allow us to do something that will have hopefully an impact within both areas. Uh, so the proposal that's set out in the report is that we use the funding to hold an environmental action day in each ward of the constituency in spring 2019. And that will be with a range of agencies to tackle a whole host of environmental and quality of life issues. We're also recommending that there's one earlier environmental action day in late October and early November in the Seacombe and Egremont area, and that's to support multi-agency activity around what the police and fire service call the Operation Banger period to tackle issues across Mischief Night, Halloween and Bonfire on Fire Night, because the Seek Megamont area is always consistently higher in terms of antisocial behaviour and secondary fires during that period. And we estimate up to £1,000 for each of those days, so that's £7,000 of the £25,000 that's within that budget. And then we also recommend that the remaining £18,000 is set aside for a Love Where You Live small grants fund, which would enable community groups to bid for uh, any funding that would help deal with any environmental issues and make improvements across neighbourhoods. So they're the recommendations for the committee's consideration. Any questions? Leslie? Yes, thanks Chair. Not really a question really, but um, problems in, in, in Wallasey Ward um, in, in respect of fly tipping, particularly around the um, uh, Buxton Lane area and School Lane and that little alleyway that goes through there. The uh, only <coughs> thing is we were thinking perhaps have a skip down there or something at some time, but that will probably only attract um, more people to fly tip and, and come down there and see it's a, a nice quiet little place where they can dump rubbish. Um, so um, we'd like to perhaps explore that a little bit further. And just because you mentioned um, the joint work that's going on with um, the fire service, um, just I, I suppose I should declare very tenuously because I'm a member of the fire department. Thanks. Anybody else? No, I think this is a really good idea and I think it's a place where there's a lot of community groups sprouting up now, I think, in, in all our wards and it's going to be a way for the community groups to to, to just get in touch and, and, and organise their own clean-up days. Um, and just to put on record, I think, in Egremont, we've got the voice of Egremont, which is um, a very vibrant new community group who cleaned up, I think it's 15 alleyways they cleaned up, alleyways that have always, always had terrible problems with light. They've stayed clean, and it's because the community are cleaning them up themselves, so maybe it's something we need to think about when we're cleaning up instead of cleaning up ourselves. The more community we get involved with it, the, the better because the community take ownership. So this is a good idea. Everybody okay? Right, move on to the next one. This is agenda item number seven, and this is the Wallasey Constituency Committee budget and spend. Um, I'll ask Caroline to outline the amount of money, um, and we'll take it from there, I think. So, Caroline. Um, the report provides an update on the committee's budget, uh, rather lengthy, I'm afraid, so apologies. So it outlines a number of the projects that we've delivered and also reports some of the underspends which are now available to the committee. So they're set out in section three and they amount to £9,565. 
The committee has also been allocated its devolved £50,000 core budget this year. As members will remember, that was put on pause last year, um, but that's available for the committee this year. So members were asked by email for suggestions for this spend. We've had two suggestions made, but in further discussion, it doesn't appear that um, the committee can add value to those items through, it, through its funding. So uh, members are asked in the report how they wish to allocate the funding in line with the committee's priorities, which are to improve personal, economic and neighbourhood wellbeing. Um, Caroline asked for suggestions and I'm sorry that only two came forward but now we are at the situation where we have to decide what it is we're going to do with our 59,000, I only said million, we, we wish, 59,000 uh, pounds and what we're going to do as a, a, a constituency. So um, I've seen Jeanette already so if anybody else, and um, Chris, so I'll start with Jeanette, there's a microphone there by Chris. You hear me? Okay, thanks, Chair. Yeah, I think, I know certainly uh, the Labour Group have been arguing for some time that we may use this money to make a real difference as opposed to just small um, awards going to um, sort of individual groups across uh, the constituency. Um, so I personally would like to put our budget into helping uh, child poverty. In Wallasey, it's a real pressing issue, uh, thanks to the main to government cuts and policies. Um, we've got children that are going hungry, we've got chip girls who can't afford sanitary products, we've got a real problem with child poverty, and I think that it would be good that we could all come together and um, use our big budget collectively to tackle this. So I'd like to see us, similar to, to the feed in Birkenhead, I think they've done a really good job of what they achieved over you know the past few years. We were there at Christmas packing hampers for them and it did really impress me. I think I'd like to see us use our money to do something similar across policy and to tackle that kind of child child poverty and obviously families that are in poverty too. Because children are in poverty that means the families in poverty. Okay. So that would be my suggestion, thanks. Thanks to First of all, I'd just like to say I thought this committee was supposed to be non-political, so I take exception, exception to Councillor Williamson attacking the Conservative government in, in what was supposed to be a, a non-political arena, uh, but clearly she can't help herself. Uh, Chair, you, you'll be aware that for years I've argued that this funding should be split between each ward down to each councillor, personal budgets, ward budgets, and look, look around. Cheshire, Cheshire West and Chester, under a Labour control, have a members award scheme to improve the quality of life and well-being of local councillors. Other authorities have award budgets, some much bigger than this. So therefore I would move that the amount of money we have should be devolved down to each ward and down to each councillor. And each councillor uh, uses that as, as a personal budget in order to assist groups to come up with schemes that are sustainable. since the 2008 crash has been in a state of austerity, it's not necessary to say which political party is responsible for the austerity. The austerity happens to be government policy and it's happening. Across will, children are very hungry. And not only children, but families. So the proposal that's being uh, hinted at is that we should use a lot of money to help a lot of people to withstand the austerity that they're all in. If we don't do that, if we decide that we're going to have a, a 
distribution of small quantities of money to each councillor, unless each councillor would be able to ensure that in her or his ward that austerity would be dealt with equally efficiently, then I don't think it's a good idea. So I'm not in, in favour of splitting it up between wards. Yes, I could spend a couple of thousand quid on a number of pet projects in my own ward. I would much rather pool the money so that we can deal with the poverty throughout the ward and there's going to be quite a bit of poverty in all of the wards. It will be concentrated more in the poorer wards, but it will occur in the wards which are represented by every political party. If I can just, just come back on that chair and hear what uh, Councillor Jones says. And I think there's an opportunity here with the best part of £60,000, to put £24,000 into a scheme such as that and allocate £6,000 to each one. And that's the money spent. We're covering, we're covering the poverty issues that have been raised and we're equally giving budget to each one. I think there's an opportunity for that compromise. Sorry, Chair, do you know the acoustics in this room are absolutely awful? Sorry, Chris, I didn't even hear the last Sorry, suggestion. I'm, I'm, using, I'm using it without the mic then, Chris. It's probably easier. Yeah. And I'm just saying, you know, 60, that's part of £60,000 in the pot. We could allocate £24,000 to a scheme to, to help with some poverty. And we can allocate the other 36000 £6,000 to each ward as a ward, uh, a ward budget to be spent in each ward. And then the overall 24000 Spent on a bigger project. Chair, I, I think we've helped lots of very small groups, and I think it's benefited very small groups over the years. But I think it's time we absolutely came out and did something that's going to make a difference to everybody in Wallasey. And I think the child poverty thing is, is good, and I think we should spend all the money on it. Um, Ian and then Paul. Can you hear me? I, I'm not uh, averse to what any member said tonight, but I haven't seen any costings or any proposal for how this money can be spent. So it's all right to say, well, that's spent 59,000 on a project, but there's nothing before us as councillors to say how that money will de deliver best value, who will be accountable for that spending, how that project will be delivered. So it's fine for Councillor Williamson to say, well, let's spend it all, Councillor Jones. I, I don't doubt her motives at all, but I think time is getting on. And we all know of projects in our own ward, some of them small projects, but some of those small projects do really good work, as we know. Some of those small organisations reach the people that the council doesn't know of or can't reach, who are operating on a shoe street, dealing with some of the effects of policies, be they local or national. Uh, and they are no more, um, should be no more uh, discriminated against uh, because it doesn't meet the particular political objectives of one or more councils. I think we need to see the evidence that, not the evidence that there is need, but the evidence of how that money will be spent. And so I don't think tonight, Chair, yeah, we can make a decision on a proposal that's been tabled tonight, because who's going to run the project, what's it going to be spent on, where's it going to be delivered, what's the timescale for delivery, how will we measure the success of that scheme? Chair, Chair I think um, I agree completely with what Councillor Lewis says, and I hear that Councillor Williamson agrees as well uh, in relation to what he said and I just feel a bit like Groundhog Day because I'm sure we were in the same position last year when Councillor Williamson and I think Councillor Spriggs made a similar suggestion. Uh, we did support yeah, a... Well, it was myself actually, to get Councillor Well, you have to be so rude all the time, Councillor Williamson. Yeah. You're not going to let a good reason now. I, I mentioned, I think, so I stand corrected, you know, I'm not, I'm not levelling an accusation here. As, as I say, you know, motives and all that, it, it, perfectly honourable, there's certainly an issue. But there's been a, a period of a year and we don't have any solid proposals in relation to how we tackle child poverty. You know, th there's, there's no solid proposals here and there's been a year in the interim, there's been a year hiatus where you could have worked with community groups and developed some sort of a, a policy or a programme to put before us. In the absence of one, I think what Councillor Blakely suggests is a perfectly um, good suggestion to be fair and it's one that I'd certainly support. Okay, um, I think we're in the situation we're in because we weren't sure exactly where the constituency committees were going. So I think that's, that's the problem. Uh, and I do agree with Ian, 
God forbid, but I do agree with the, the church, that there isn't anything on, on the table. And um, it's not a suggestion just yet because I don't think the debate is over. But I would not, I, I would think it would be a good idea to go away um, and actually sit down and have a look and see how this money can be best spent in alleviating child poverty in all the wards because it goes through all the wards. So we need to go away and have a look and see exactly how we would do that. Um, I know for an example, and I have to declare an interest from a distance because I think it was Cheshire West that wanted to alleviate um, social isolation and gave, I think it was £10,000 to Age UK to develop a, a project purely for them in, in their area. Now, we're concentrating on child poverty. That's just an example of what was done in another area. We would need to go away and we would need to see what exactly is available, maybe through the third sector, so the third sector would be the people who would deliver this project for us. So I, I, it's just an idea at this time. But I think to wait till January, if that's too long, I am not adverse to have an either a special committee meeting um, later on or to have two or three named people from each committee so we can have a subgroup. I know Chris is totally against that, but we could have a subgroup to make sure, to ensure that if we don't have an extraordinary meeting, by the time we come back in January, we have something actually firm up and, 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 and ready to put on the table for us all to look at. So it's, it's not a proposal as yet, it's only some thoughts. Now I know Jeanette wants to come in, so I'm yeah. going to pass it to Jeanette and then Ian and then Leslie. Jeanette. Yeah, thanks for letting me come back, Chair. I apologise if that appeared rude, but I put the record straight that it wasn't me that kind of sprung a last minute suggestion at the last constituency committee because I think the implication was I was doing it again. So, um, and that, my thinking around this is with what Bernie's just said, and actually I did agree with Ian that, that we haven't got here at this moment in time groups that have come forward to say they could deliver our outcomes and what we want to do, and I appreciate that. I think that the, the, because we thought constituency committees were changing. We, we, we've been on the back foot a little bit here. But I, I think that we could um, ask for community groups to come forward when we put our specific aims and objectives out there in, in, in tackling child poverty. We could ask people across Wallace to come forward to us and we could consider them to deliver the project in the same way that we would consider any other kind of bid. We'd have to have criteria for it and I think that it would be a good idea if we don't wait till our next meeting, but we do have a special committee meeting earlier than that, so we can get this up and running, should we agree it tonight. Thanks, Jeff. I can make a couple of observations and then maybe put something on the table. Um, at the meeting that has been referred to uh, when Councillor Spriggs uh, spoke very highly of an organisation in New Brighton Ward, um, Charlotte's Brightside, that was dealing with uh, summer feeding within a very small scheme within the Brighton Ward, and she asked for the committee to consider a, a sum of money for them. Uh, and we said we'd go away and look at that. And now Councillor Spriggs, who well, I appreciate he's not here tonight, but Councillor Spriggs and I both made contact with the organiser uh, of that group who lives in Wallasey Ward, and it became clear that the amount of money she was looking for was, I think it was about, from memory, about £500, a ridiculously small amount of money for the budget that we were discussing that night at that meeting. But that amount of money transformed that organisation that summer in terms of what they could leave around with additional funds. Now, had we not had that Councillor Spriggs to pay credit to Councillor Spriggs, had she not brought that to the table at that meeting, that organisation wouldn't have had that money. So what I'm suggesting here is that instead of us tonight making a decision to spend all of the money on one particular project that we have yet to determine the outcome of, I think we should, I fully agree that we need to have something on the table, but I think we also need to be aware that there are groups out there who need to have maybe a bit more awareness that there is a pot of money there that they could apply to because it would have to be an application-based process, uh, unless we're going to run the project ourselves as an authority, and I've seen the proposals that we're going to do that. Uh, equally, I think as councillors, we will all be aware of organisations in our wards that either could uh, uh, value some of that money themselves for their own outcomes that meet the strategic objectives of this committee. So I think if we wait until January, it will be too late, and my concern is that while we were notified of this money late because of the process, the financial process within the authority, I wouldn't want to see that money lost because it could make a, deal, a, a great deal of difference to the Wallasey constituency as a whole. But I would share, if you'd be willing, I, I'd like to ask um, Caroline for an update uh, in terms of the wider discussion that's going on within the authority in terms of how personal budgets will be delivered 
to local councillors because my my thoughts along with Councillor Blake and some of the others is that we could we could have been a pilot scheme in this constituency to iron out any difficulties from that scheme, even if we started small with a couple of thousand pounds per councillor to see how that scheme operated before it's rolled out, because I understood that that scheme is going to be rolled out across the authority. So while I accept what some of the other members have said in terms of wanting one single big project, if the wider policy of the council is to move to personal budgets, we are arguing against ourselves. And so, and one final point, Chair, I think it was two meetings ago, and Councillor Jones will correct me if I'm wrong, Councillor Jones proposed that we put some money into dementia, um, dealing with some of the effects of dementia in the constituency. Now, that was a proposal that we made two meetings ago. Tonight, tonight we've had a proposal to deal with food poverty from Councillor Williamson. My concern is that it's going to be another six months before we have anything else on the table. As worthy as those calls are, I think we need to have some sort of process in place now to establish how this money is going to be spent. Thank you. Was it Chris? Did you... No, no. Oh, Leslie, no. sorry. Mine is, mine is very short, um, uh, and much of what Ian said I, I was going to talk about, but um, clearly, you know, I'm not denying that there's child poverty um, in, in all our wards, um, some to a lesser extent than others, but I know particularly in, in my ward, um, the problem is social isolation of older people, and um, I would like to have that discussed as well um, at any meeting that we have to see how we're going to spend this money. Um, because that is, that is a real problem and um, we, we did put um, a joint exercise together you probably remember it a year, probably over a year ago now with the, um, and I'm not saying we should give age UK um, funding to do it again but something similar to um, the big door knock that we had um, which while it didn't actually identify uh, an awful lot of people it did identify some and I think that um, as well as children and families that clearly old people in isolation and um, a number of them suffering from dementia should also be considered as well for part of this funding. So I think it cuts across all ages um, in, in all our wards, but as I say, in particular in, in my ward, um, and I'm only speaking for my ward, I would say that the bigger problem is um, older people and, and the issue of their needs. Okay, there's so much for that to clear in an interest. I'll declare an interest as well. I'm managing the team that are doing the, the door knocks for Age UK at the moment. So and we've just done one in Heswell that was very successful. So um, social isolation doesn't just affect older people. There's a growing uh, amount of very, very young people through whether it be poverty, whether it be um, the new use of technology, um, whether it be not having the right trainers to go out or whether it be through bullying, there's more and more and more young people who are being socially isolated as well. So social isolation, I think, is one of the biggest problems that we've got coming on. And I think in 20 years' time, the younger generation that we have now, we're going to have real mental health problems because of the social isolation that younger people are feeling at the minute. So, um, And we did spend four, four thousand eight hundred and ninety three pound on on social on social isolation and on, on the dementia friendly ideas and dealing with that sort of stuff um, we've got the brunch clubs in okay we'll do that and then I'll, I'll, I'll finish up with what I think which way we should go understanding is that there have been no decisions made as yet. Um, however, there has been wide-ranging consultation with a range of uh, community groups and organisations, obviously with elected members and with other stakeholders around the future direction of the committees. Um, one of the options considered has been around the idea of a personal award budget, um, but as I say, no decisions have been made around that yet. Um, there could be some governance arrangements that the committee uh, agrees around that. Uh, in the absence of any uh, decision about the future of the committee, so that would be an option. Pat? Yeah, I'll, I'll just stand up. Forgive me, but you know, maybe I'm missing something. We're pontificating tonight, in, um, um, during our elections, on average of 30, 30 odd percent of people in the turnout. And we're pontificating tonight in a hall that's got one person, one community member, about spending community. Maybe I'm missing something, but there's an irony there somewhere, without a doubt. But in terms of the money, it is a fantastic amount of money, and it can make a big difference. And somebody who works in a community centre, 
and sees all sorts of things and deals with all sorts of people over many years. Uh, I see that at the cold face, a lot of issues and a lot of things. And yeah, you're right, we could all spend it in the wards on pet projects. We could have a councillor's fund, which they do have, as Chris has alluded to, and Leslie, up and down the country. You look at it, uh, and uh, you know you can argue for or against that. But you know that would, in my personal opinion, be seen to be councillors in control, sort of bottom uh, instead of bottom or top down. Uh, I don't think that's going to help, particularly with the current perception of politicians. So I think it's important whatever we do tonight. Yeah. I don't think anybody, has, uh, judging by what I've heard tonight, anybody would argue about uh, child poverty. That's for sure. It's just the mechanics, as Ian said before, mechanics behind how you do it. I think, lastly, as well, it's important that we are going to go down the road of, of, of all the money going to child poverty, and I've got no problem with that. Uh, but again, for obvious reasons, I think uh, it's important with Christmas coming up uh, that we, we speed it up those mechanisms particularly around Christmas time, because it's always at its worst and highlights it, is it not, around that time of year, that we speed that up, Chair, uh, and, and look, at, look at mechanisms for that. And, and why not as well, um, maybe a panel of community reps as well, no, no community reps here tonight, as I say, and we do have community reps, don't we? There's none of them here, uh, Maybe a panel of community reps from all the world, I don't know, to be on that panel to look at things. But we need to speed it up whatever way we do it, Maybe we need to delegate it to to, to uh, yourselves. Okay. Um, what I was going to say before was that is already a brunch club running through the whole of the Wallasey constituency that um, has churches. There's a church here in Morton. There's one in Wallasey Village. This it, it's it's been the meetings I've attended have been through St Albans, and uh, they've run a brunch club to St Albans, St Joseph's. Um, and as I say, churches in New Brighton, in Wallasey Village, and in Morton, so, and I think they do the Liso um, School as well. So there is already um, a, a brunch club organised, and they were looking into um, organising themselves along the line as this, the feed and bacon had, and that was at a research level. Now, bringing everything on board, I, I, I'm just going to put a suggestion on the table and see how you feel. Um, I take on board what Ian said, that if we're not going to be making any decisions about a big pot of money until maybe January, put some money aside, maybe putting the 9,000, whatever it is, aside and holding 50,000 to one side. And the project, the big project for alleviating child poverty should be for the £50,000 pot. Um, and what we should do is um, think about going to the third sector to see if there's an organisation out there who could deliver this for us. Um, it's only a suggestion. Um, we can see what comes forward, but we'll have money there for emergencies, such as if anybody needs money for brunch clubs over Christmas, so that'll be there. I'm going to St Albans tomorrow. I was at the food bank last night, um, and I'm going to the, um, the, the, the other meeting tomorrow night, me and Tom are going. So we can ask them to put some costings together for the, the brunch club Wallasey constituency and see what money is needed for that because obviously they need money and then we can take it from there. Now that's a suggestion um, and I'm not opposed to us having a subgroup of some sort to sit down and talk to each other beforehand as this goes on. So um, I, I just want to put that on the table. I don't know if anybody wants to second it or whether you want to discuss it before we move on. Chair, I'd like to support it. I'm not going to say much about it. Um, this is a rare occasion where we seem to have so much in common across the political divide. Uh, it's obvious that uh, for, for once we are thinking, all of us, in broadly the same direction. So I'd be very happy to second the proposal. Well, yeah. I find myself unusually agreeing with uh, Councillor Lewis. It's uh, getting to be a, a bit of a, a regular thing lately. I'm, worried about it, I'm happy to like it. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'd like to support that. Um, I mean, you know, with, with child poverty, um, social isolation, it's vulnerable people really, isn't it? We want to help. Christine, Chair, can I just ask that you um, or whoever takes some, um, as a conversation with Joe Beryl, 
who has been so involved with the feeding bin head, just to make sure that we're going the right way about it. Previously been allowed to be carried over any yeah. underspend. Um, obviously, we couldn't guarantee that that would always be the case. And as you've noted, with a different funding stream, we did lose some mm. underspend. Um, to uh, Tom. Uh, yeah, I'd, just I think Pat and Paul are right. We know it needs to be needs to be really timely. We need to need to set some dates and and, um, and meet as soon as possible. I think. Um, if we don't have a firm proposal on the table, we can't possibly know um, how much a group that we would approach to run this large project would need. <coughs> so I don't think we could commit to a, um, a, an amount for each war to have a devolved budget because we're not sure how much the large project is actually going to last for. Um, Chris, Sorry. Chris and then Ian. No, the danger is if we say to an organisation how much do you want, they'll come yes. back and say, we'll have £59,965. So, uh, you know, well, why wouldn't they? You know, anybody's going to do that. So I think we have to set the, the parameters of what we're looking to do and then invite an organisation or organisations to say, well, this is what we can deliver for it, this is how much extra money we can leave around. So I, I think just to be clear, you know, if, if we're saying that the, we're not going to commit any of the budget tonight, I think we do, we do need to start some sort of process to spending some of it on activities that either meet the objectives that councillors have mentioned already, or other objectives that we might have in our own wards that we think, well, this is a good project that we'd like to back in our ward that could deal with the objective but on, uh, by a local organisation. Chris? Yeah, Chair, sure. I hear what everyone said. Nobody, nobody's convinced me to change your mind yet. So I'd like to formally move that out of this 59,965, 36,000 set aside, 6,000 for each ward, for ward budgets, for each ward councillor then to determine um, uh, uh, that pot of money for people to bid into. Procedural causes, as it says, to improve the quality of life and well-being of local communities, uh, and the balance to be used to support a scheme. 